It's funny, when I was writing about the third eye chakra uh, last night and just been really studying into the chakras a lot lately, I was just really fired up inside to talk about this chakra. And the reason that I wanted to talk about it is because I'm so passionate on people changing the way they see their bodies. It's still everywhere. I work in schools, I work with adults, I work with teenagers and I work with kids and I constantly see people just ripping apart their bodies. And it's not just a physical thing, it's the way that they speak about themselves. It is this constant comparison, this constant, I don't look a certain way and it's not enough. It's this constant, like, in, especially in um, my age group of women, oh, I wish I had a tummy like that or I wish I looked like that or, you know, I'm going to be really, really happy when I lose 10 kilos or 5 kilos or fit into that dress size. It's all bullshit. And why this is important for this chakra is because our third eye chakra, it transcends us from duality. We start to understand that we are not a separate being and that we're not separate from anyone else. There's no one better than us. No one looks better than us or we don't look better than anybody else. We're all just these incredible um, souls having a human experience. So why this is important on this third eye chakra is because when our third eye chakra is out of balance, we are like um, blocked by illusion. And I, the reason I'm talking about this is because this is so close to my heart. My Most of my life was spent in illusion. And what I mean by that is I had an illusion of the self that I thought I had to be. You know, going through many eating disorders from the age, well, physically from the age of 15, um, in my eyes, it started way before that when I was six, when a little girl commented that I wasn't pretty enough to be on her team. It was from that moment that I started developing a story and a belief that I wasn't pretty enough, that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't smart enough, that whatever I did, it was just not ever enough. So I spent a lot of my years trying to get and seek approval, trying to be the best at everything, trying to, um, you know, win everything. I um, had, I don't think perfectionism is a trade. I think we go in and out of perfectionism. And I was definitely in a lot of perfectionism and trying to people please from a very young age. And that then, of course, moved it into my adult life. And obviously, when I turned 15 and 16, I had, um, I'd reached a point where I'm like, okay, what can I control here? And that's where I started to move into restricting and not eating food. And that was a buildup of so many years of thinking I wasn't enough. So what we practice grows stronger and I had the illusion of what I thought I wanted to be and this is my third eye chakra was very very blocked and this space um, is our space of intuition and our guidance and when it's blocked we can't be into it we can't tune in to what it is that we need and I was so blocked by a vision that I thought was perfect I was so blocked by thinking that if I had this perfect body um, everything would be okay, but I was constantly, constantly searching for more and more and more and more. And that constant searching as I was a teenager and a child then moved into my adult life of this job, this job. I was constantly buying uh, clothes and shoes, um, drugs and alcohol, um, numbing. Um, I was numbing. I was numbing for a good solid 10 years from my 20s to my 30s just looking for all these things and fitness became a part of the numbing process for me I was in the gym constantly I was on my fitness pal I was trying to just burn all these calories look a certain way I was so obsessed with the obsession of trying to please like anyone and everyone to gain approval. I had no idea that what I needed was already within me. So 
when I was riding on this chakra, it really brought up these feelings and emotions of like, wow, go you, you have come so far. Because when I was in my eating disorder, and everyone tells you, those of you who have had an eating disorder, and I've had bulimia, anorexia, body dysmorphia, uh, I've been through all of them. And they tell you, you'll never ever get past an eating disorder, you know? And the doctors tell your parents that, and your parents tell you that, and then you hear that and you think, well, I'll never get through it. But I can tell you right now that um, I'm definitely through, I've been through it for about three or four years. So what am I now, 39? No, at least five years. Um, and it, it started with myself understanding, my, my yoga teachers, Manu and Sally, um, when they spoke on the chakras, I remember a very clear moment going, oh my God, why didn't somebody teach me this? The chakras and Ayurveda, those two understandings helped me lean into my body to start to practice kindness. And that was it. I remember after my yoga teacher training, it was almost two years of the mantra, I choose to be kind because I would wake up and I would hate on my body. I would hate the way I looked. I'd go thrash myself at the gym. I would beat myself up for how many calories or alcohol or whatever it was that I drank the night before. And I, that would just be my focus. And I became so obsessed with that. I just was never, ever happy or content with this beautiful body that I had, this beautiful mind that I had, and this beautiful soul that I had, it just was never enough. So if you're a woman out there and you still look in the mirror and you still don't appreciate what you got, then you're not showing up. You're not stepping into your higher self. You might think you might be, you might be doing all this spiritual work and reading all the books like I did. But if you are still waking up and you're still comparing yourself and if you are still waking up and going, I wish I didn't eat that and I've got to do this, this and this and this today or I've got to limit my food today because, you know, I was bad yesterday, then, honey, you, you, you're you still showing the universe God source that you are unworthy, right? When we start to show up fully and we start to back ourselves and we start to come from a place of love and go, you know what, it just was what it was without actually going back on that and just to go, you know, the best thing I can do right here and now is be kind and compassionate. Everything changes, everything. And as I said, this is this space of our, our illusion, the, the, the way we think we should look a lot down to our environment and what society expects us to be. So... You know, and it even even in this third eye chakra, we may have uh, grown up and had dreams, and this is what this is about. This is a space of our moving into our soul's purpose, right? And we may have had dreams and visions and um, imagination when we were little of being a singer or being a, a writer or being an artist or whatever it might have been. But because of the world and the the uh, conception of we have to have this career and we have to be a certain um, status or we have to have this, um, we have to be a, a someone. Ram Das talks on about it. He does that movie, Becoming becoming Nobody. But we're, we're born to become a somebody. And what are we if we don't? So this, this creativity, this imagination, this visualization and imagination we have kids might have been shut down. And even as we we're growing up, we had this idea, you know, we're going through our teens and we're like, oh, I really want to pursue this passion of, of yoga or singing or dance or artists, but that's not a career. And we start to, to not believe that we can. And so we do the corporate job, we do the, the nine to five, and then we get flat and we get dull and, and our body language changes to ourselves and we don't back ourselves and we, we have no energy, we have no vitality, and we just do the motions, it's just Groundhog Day. We forget that our soul is here ready to shine out and to help people. That's what we're here for, we're here to give back, we're here to serve. Every single one of us is here to serve. And I, I fully, fully believe in that because when we give back to others, then the universe gives back to us. And this is all to do with our imagination. And if we can't use our imagination to visualize what it is that our soul is telling us to do, we need to be quiet. We need to be quiet enough to be able to hear what our soul is trying to tell us. 
But too often, we're just too busy. We're filling our space with everything we can, like I did not so long ago. You know, and even coming out of this uh, COVID-19 stuff, it's so easy to fall back into busyness. And I've made a decision and a choice to not do that. And it's so easy because the world is going back to being busy. You know, I drove on the road the other day and everyone was feisty and there was people cutting in in front of each other. And it's up to us what we want to create. But if our mind is busy and full and constantly on the go, and if we're watching our phones until like 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, our pineal gland, which is of course located right here between our third eye, is going to get the signal back from our phones, from our TVs, that no, it's not the time we sleep yet, it's going to keep us up. And when that does that, we're going to get tired and exhausted and stressed, and we're going to fall more and more and more flat down. So lastly, if we have this vision and imagination in our third eye chakra, you know, this is, um, you know, obviously our higher chakras, this energy has to transcend down through our higher chakras, down through our heart space and into our lower, more physical realm, um, physical realm chakras to then be able to manifest. So if we're having problems manifesting, it's getting stuck along the way, right? It's like a water flowing through a waterfall or a pond and there's leaves or there's bits and pieces or there's rubbish that's stuck, um, stopping this flow of manifestation. So if we have this dream up here and we're like, I really, really want to, like, like my, my dream is to, to talk in schools and to, to bring my love of people speaking kinder to themselves around the world in a van, you know, that is, well, around Australia in a van, but around the world, I'm going to have to fly. But that is going to get blocked if I am not speaking my truth, if I am not doing this out of my heart space, if I don't have full love for myself and compassion. And if I don't have enough self-esteem and confidence in my power center, it's going to get blocked along the way and we're not going to be able to manifest. So our third eye chakra is such an important one. And as I said, I'm so passionate about it because it really starts with the language we speak to ourselves. What is it that we believe about ourselves? And does it ring true for us in order for us to manifest these dreams into reality? So I wanted to share that because it is close to my heart on that one. I was blocking myself for so many years just due to body image, due to the way I looked, due to the way I saw myself, due to the way that I was always striving and I was always pushing and I was always wanting something more. I was never, ever happy with what I was. When I allowed and I accept myself for my flaws and the days when I don't feel so great, I just lean in. I feel my anxiety. I welcome it in now. And I'm like, thank you. What are you here to teach me? We then create an ease and we create this thing called flow, which allows our body to move prana, right? Our life force through our body and things start to um, be in synchronicity. They start to flow. So 12 p.m. today, registration's closed for moving with your chakras. I'm pretty excited, as I said, you can see how they all tie in and it's not just fixing one chakra, it is making sure that all our chakras are clear but understanding that we're going to go in and out of this all the time. So when we understand what we feel, if we're starting to close up our heart and we're starting to move into fear, we need to open our heart space and vice versa. There's so It's just such a beautiful way to, to understand how to move how to breathe and how to tune in and lean in to what's going on rather than push it away. When we find things that are challenging for us, right? Um, if we uh, have problems, um, trust me, I stumble over those words. We have problems like um, public speaking or doing exactly what I'm doing, speaking on a video, then we need to practice that more. We need to open up this space of our truth and our speaking, our voice. We do the things that challenge us. We get in this point in life where we just sit in this comfort zone and we need to welcome in the uncomfortable. And that's what it's about. The more we do that, we embrace the things that challenge us, the more we start to open up these energy centers and we find flow. 12 o'clock today, jump on the link in my bio to check it out or you can jump on the link below or post it if this is going on Facebook as well. So namaste. Remember, be kind to yourselves today. Be kind to your body. We have one of them. We have one body. It is as it is. You have an opportunity right now to make good choices. That is completely up to you. Ask yourself, what would my highest self do in this situation? It's up to us to change 
the way that the world operates because it starts right here with you and it starts right here with me. Namaste.